Hello there. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Hello, Angela. Uh, first one in on YouTube. Um, I'm going to apologise in advance for the torrential rain that's about to befall us, purely because it gets really noisy on the roof, so I may have to talk a little bit louder when that happens. Have you got thunder? Mind you, the garden is drenched, quenched. It's really dry, and that's the opposite of what I'm trying to say. Garden could do with it. It's really, really dry. Uh, hi, Tina, Sheila, Gillian, Sharon. Hello, Brenda. Hello to Jean and Laura. Hello, Cheryl, Janet. Hello to you too, and um, Shirley, Shelley, and um, Jeanette, Karen, and Rita. Hi, Rita. Uh, I'm nice and early in New York. Hello, Julie, Karen, Andrea. Uh, very good today, thank you. Oh gosh. Um, oh, so many. So many comments coming in from YouTube, they just went whoosh, so sorry if I miss anybody. Uh, Jackie Solvig, hello, Nana knits a lot. Where were you? Jack is in the New Forest. Um, Nana knits a lot is in Florida. <laughs> uh, hello, I'm Marie Michaela, Mary Kate and Diane on Facebook. Can you hear it? That's, that's a gentle pitter patter. I think we're going to have a storm, so it's going to get very noisy. I do have soundproofing in here as well, but it's... Um, not soundproofed enough, I think. All is very well at Shaw Towers. Thank you very much, Sarah. Very talented lady is our Sarah. Does felting and card making and all sorts, I found out last week. Um, hello, Kate. Um, Sonia, not Loman. Lovely. Let's hope it stays that way. My, no, 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 no. The garden needs it. Got all my summer deck chair shots out of the way last week, so the garden needs a little bit of water. Um, hello, Sandra. Got some new things to show you, and then we're going to do a little bit of tripping. Do um, easy. There's there's lots of different ways of doing it, but this is a very easy one. And I was going to use my free motion embroidery foot. Can't find it. So we're going to do a straight stitch on the sewing machine and see how we go with that one. Morning, Helen. Morning, Kate. Morning, Mary. Um, Rosalind. Good morning to you. Wasp sting. Rosalind is. Um, I'll show you. It's a bit, bit red, bit swollen, but purity is working well, and the. Um, Antihistamine cream's doing well as well, so it's not painful or anything at the moment. It's a bit itchy, but not painful. But yeah, the little devil, there I was, just walking the dog, middle of a field full of blue flowers, no, no, nothing to disturb, no, you know, not, not offending any insects at all. And all of us, and resisting, off he went, like somebody put a little pin in him. Really painful, little devil. Uh, morning dawn, just poured in Gloucestershire. It's getting heavy, you can hear the thunder. Uh, right, let me show you what we've got because we have got a lot today and we've got um, a lot of sewing to do as well. Don't you love these? We bring you um, a few different ones of these. These are brand new, but do you remember the... I don't know if we've still got it in stock, actually. This is, this is mine. Um, the Bumblebee one. Might be in stock, I don't know, but they're just lovely. They're nice gifts, they're really lovely quality. Or if you just want to treat yourself, then it's a what better thing. But this is strawberries, look. I think my daughter's gone strawberry mad. But it's beautiful. It's got these hand-sewn felt strawberries all around it. And it'll be there as well. It's a happy gift. You've got a gift tag on there as well if you did want to gift it. But when you open it up, it's an exploding box full of goodies. And the goodies all come with it. So there's a pink cushion. Um, we've got a, oh no, that's thread. I thought it was elastic. Oh, it is elastic. We've got elastic and thread. A needle threader, needles, buttons, quick and pick, a um, pair of scissors, a tape measure, and a thimble, and space as well. A couple of pins. You even get two pins in there as well, look. And the whole thing just folds away. Isn't it gorgeous? Like that. Top folds over there, closes down. And that's it. And you've already seen, we've got the matching little needle case here as well. So let me just open that up. So you've got the same things inside, really. So there's, um, you've got your threads, there's needles inside there, um, thimble, safety pins, quick and pick, scissors, tape measure and buttons. So it's like an emergency kit. But I think if you, you, know, if you know somebody who sews, you don't necessarily always know what their taste in fabric is or what they've made or what they're going to make. But you can't go wrong with something like this. Or a nice little leaving home present would be good as well. So, yeah, so those are the brand new on the website today. And I just think they are absolutely adorable. So much detail. I mean, even like the, the little trail where the bee's been flying. So much detail. And all this is hand-stitched as well. So they are, they're very nicely made. Hi, Kate. Um, 
It's one, it is Laura. Yes, I remember that. So very similar. This one's got the lid kind of attached to it and it all opens up. They're beautiful. So uh, let's try that like that and that. Um, not too hot in Kent yet. Sewing on the patio since eight has Sylvia. How lovely. No, no sewing on the patio for us today, I don't think. Swimming on the patio maybe later on. Um, right. We've got the whole collection of Stuart Hillard's latest range in today. And this is a little bit special. I'll show you those in a second. Is it that one, that one, that one? They're all organic. So this is the Make and Believe range from the Craft Cotton Company again. The colours are beautiful. And Stuart says he's based this on the farm where he lives and um, the baking that he does. He, he raises chickens and goats and I think they've got sheep and um, he does a lot of baking to Stuart. So he's kind of put together, it's called uh, Blue Skies and Nutmeg and he's put together a range of fabric that just reflects his life really. So he's got a very nice life with his chickens and his baking. I love the chicken ones, I'll just look on the other side of that. There we go. So there's two, so these are all by the half metre, so we haven't bundled them together, they're all half metre pieces. There is another one somewhere with chickens on, here we go. So it's a collection of ten, but I just think they're, they're so pretty. Um, individually I'd use every single one of them, but together wouldn't that make an amazing quilt? They're, they're just beautiful. And but lovely quality as well. And remember, the Make and Believe range is organic. So all of these are organic cottons. But these um, next ones I'm going to show you are yarn dyed. So it's all organic still. It's still cotton. But the difference is these are a print. So when you turn the fabric over to the back, you can see that the print is on the top, on the right side of the fabric. With this selection, all the same colours and everything, they're still much, but these are yarn dyed. So it's the same on the back as it is on the front. So instead of being a print, the yarn is dyed before it's woven, a little bit like jacquard weaving. So you can use both sides of these. And the design of these is actually based on things like tea towels. So it's got that kitcheny kind of look to it. So again, when you see the same on both sides, no right or wrong sides to these, they're both exactly the same because the yarn has been dyed first. So that is the whole collection of 10. Aren't they gorgeous? I think he's done a really good job this time. I think very rarely do we buy a designer's complete collection. But that's what we've done here. Yes, peg bags Lorraine would be lovely. I think anything kitcheny, summery, um, but a quilt, I just think using all of them would be absolutely amazing. You're going to need planes, so if you're going with organic, may as well stay with organic. And this is the Make and Believe Ochre Gold which isn't an exact match, but it's pretty close. So if you wanted to break up the design a little bit with a plane, ochre gold goes really well. Or this one is the Make and Believe Brown. So if you're making a binding or something, or some sashing or borders, um, or a lining for a bag, then those two colours go really, really well. Um, I'm going to look at with this one. I'm not sure what they're all called. If you have a look under the new arrivals on the website, you'll see them all on. They've just gone on literally this morning, but don't they just go so well together? They're, they're very kind of warming, homing, homely fabrics, which is exactly what what Stuart wanted to portray with them. And do you know what? He's gone and done it. He got it right. That's lovely. That's lovely. That's lovely. They're all lovely. Um, now blues, we do have a blue, the sky blue in the organic, which again isn't an exact match. It's a little bit brighter, but it goes. Or you could go for, I'm only thinking of organic at the moment because I think if you're going organic, then you want everything organic. We've got a navy. So maybe, actually maybe the navy goes a little bit better bit more of a contrast I think if you wanted to go for the navy so that's that's the whole range and, and as I said it's it's not rough because we oh that's my thread that's my thread law on the floor um, when we buy fabric it doesn't matter which manufacturer you buy from um, that you're presented with the whole collection and we normally cherry-pick the ones that we like um, and the ones that we think that you will like so if there's one that really 
it doesn't appear, we leave that out. So sometimes we'll only have three from a collection of ten. Sometimes we'll have five, sometimes we'll have seven. Um, with Lewis Myring, we tend to have all of them. But we've never had a whole complete range of another designer's fabric like this from, from Stuart or anybody else from Craft Cotton, really. But there wasn't one of these where we just thought, no, that, that one won't go. No, and that doesn't go with that. And we don't like that one. And, and everything, we liked every single one of them. Um, hello, Sue in Brisbane in Australia. Yes, I, I like solid colours, Lorraine, in a quilt because they, they make all of the other prints stand out, don't they? I mean, you could use the stripe as a solid. Um, against one of the um, heavier pattern fabrics, but I, I do like a plain. And the planes are normally more affordable, so they make your pattern fabrics, your more expensive fabrics, go a little bit further, don't they? So, oh, I'm glad you like that one. And I'll just fold these up neatly as I can. Uh, oh, Katrina's in Scotland on her honeymoon. Couldn't miss this for the world. <laughs> Oh, I hope your new husband doesn't mind. Is he watching with you? Congratulations, you have a wonderful time. Um, very sunny and hot, hot, hot in Sicily. Oh, and lovely, taking a rest from the sun. Uh, I'd like to take a rest from the rain. Actually, it stopped again. I think we're going to have one of those off and on type of days today. I know, dropping thread. I, it's just a way of mentioning the thread law. I had to get it out there, didn't I? Right, so that's Stuart. We've got more Christmas. So, see, this is what I mean about a collection. I'm not, I'm not sure how many were in this collection, but we've ordered three. Because sometimes you just don't like stuff, you know? Sometimes, I don't know, sometimes the designer will put two different prints together and say, well, they don't go. So we may be wrong, but that's the way we think. So we choose what we like and what we think that you'll like. Um, so again, I, I'm not sure. Have a look on the new arrivals. We've got so much coming in at the moment, I can't remember what everything's called but all under new arrivals. But we, we've, got, uh, we've got a little bit of Christmas for you. And this is a lot of Christmas for you because we've got another bunting panel. It's another big one. So you've got your Merry Christmas across the top. And then there's ornaments, which you could make more bunting with on the side. There are labels, ideally if you're making a Christmas quilt. And then little gift tags or labels on the bottom there as well. And as you can see, you've got instructions on how to make them. You will need some backing fabric. So I suggest you just go for um, j just a white or a corally red, that one. It's not a bright pillar box red. Or maybe a bright green would look really nice. But personally, I'd just go for a white for my backing fabric um, for the bunting and the ornament pieces down there. Now, some of these will come with your... Merry Christmas separately. So you'll still get everything on the sheet, but the Merry Christmas will be in a different piece, which you're going to cut out anyway, so it's not too important, but that's, that's just the way that it came off the, off the roll. So just to warn you, it might not be in one piece, but everything is there and usable. Um, probably the storm, so what's losing a signal? Oh, right. We are, we are having a storm on the way. It seems to have um, pelted it down twice now with thunder and lightning and stopped again. So I'm hoping we're going to be all right. But yes, we are a little bit, little bit stormy today. Um, Jean's started re-washing the sewing bee from the beginning. And so he was on the first one, wasn't he, Jean? Um, that's right. How long ago was that? I haven't been down yet, Alana. Um, I was going to go down on Thursday and we had, had a few issues up here so I couldn't get down there. Um, so in fact it's not me that's down there, it's Kim, we'll be down there on Monday, so sorry about that. Um, that's the joy of having an office which is an hour and a half away from home. Um, hopefully when we move, if it ever happens, next time you ask I can nip over and have a look. Uh, hello Patricia. Can the Liberty Posy Sprig be used for PJs as they only mentioned quilting? Absolutely, they are, um, they're all cottons. Uh, you'll find, Sarah, that uh, most fabric manufacturers will say that not recommended for nightwear. And I think it goes back to the days when we had open fires and nighties used to catch fire when you wafted past them. So it's just to cover people's own bottoms. 
Um, it's the same with washing instructions. All, all fabric will say 30 degree wash, and I'm sure you can wash more, but they, to be safe, they say 30 degree wash and not to be used for night wear. But that's why it's your, your fabric, you, you do what you want with it. Um, Carol says, it's very humid in Claxby. Won't be watching next Saturday. I'm not here next Saturday, Carol. So, um, yeah, I've got my days mixed up. I thought it was this weekend, but it's next weekend. Me and Kim are going to a spa for a weekend because I think we deserve it. Mm. So I won't be here next Saturday. And your 65th birthday. Congratulations, Carol. You have a lovely time. Um, crafting live in Doncaster. Morning, Kate. Morning, Mary. Uh, hi, Jen Jones. Um, right, that's it fabric-wise to show you. We'll have some more on Wednesday. Um, I have got a couple of templates. These went on about half an hour ago, and I don't think we've got many left. They went really quickly. But I'll show you anyway, because we'll get some more in stock. Uh, so this is the So Easy Slash and Circle ruler. You use a 28 millimetre rotary cutter with it. So it's acrylic, it's a nice thick one. And I'm not going to open this one because we might have to sell it because we haven't got many left. Um, but if, when, when we get some more stock in, I shall demonstrate it for you. Uh, so it's in centimetres. Um, and you've got a line across here and the groove extends it. So if you're cutting a circle, you'll fold your fabric in half Place this over the top of it with the red line which says fold line across the fold and then start off the edge and use your rotary cutter to cut all the way around there and then when you open it out you've got a perfect circle. If you're cutting a semicircle, then you'll do the same but this is where you're going to put the edge of your fabric and that will give you a seam allowance of a quarter of an inch. So it's very well thought out. The two pieces down here are um, for cutting wavy lines. So you get a uniform wavy line. So if you wanted a wavy line around the edge of your quilt or the hem of a skirt, or you're cutting up fabric strips maybe, you get a uniform wavy line. So there's a large wavy line and a narrow wavy line. And there are lots of instructions on the wrong side of this as well. Uh, so on the wrong side, on the back of it as well. So that's the slash and circle ruler. This one is ascending squares. Bit bright, isn't it? Um, so there's 45 degree angles here, and these are, are those in inches? Let's have a look on the back. Lots of instructions for this one, and lots of different ways that you can use it. So you've got 30, 40, and uh, 45 and 60 degree triangles. Yeah, this one's in inches, two inch to ten inches. For your finished squares, you can cut, so you can be making your flying grease, um, bias binding, perfect, and all of your instructions on here. And there's a QR code, so it'll take you straight through to a, a web, um, a web demo. It says it'll probably be a YouTube video of how to actually use it. So that's that one. Okay. Oh, and just to let you know as well. Because I have had questions this morning asking when the Winter Wonderland and Christmas Robins are back in stock. They're back in stock now. So that is your Winter Wonderland. I only went back in this morning. And I don't have the... Oh, I do have the cord. The whole thing, if you put some backing fabric wadding and bias binding around it, will make the quilt at the back. So it's a quilt that size. But then, of course, you can cut up the individual pieces, as I'm going to this morning, and make something different out of them, like Janice has made the bag and the little document holder at the back there as well. Oh, while I'm waving my arm around this bit, don't forget to have a look on Kim's... Um, blog it's what kimberly sews if you want a free tutorial on how to make that bag it's all using liberty fabrics and this is the towel tote which is next uh no with this month's secondary project on the half yard club right i think that's kept you up to date uh, let's fold that back should we do a bit of sewing when i folded this one up again uh, there we go Okay, I'll just show the robins while we're here as well because it's been a while since I've had that in stock. So we pinched all the stock back off Crank Craft. I've got it here for you. This is one of my favourite ones. It's a huge one again, but it's for 
massive fat quarters. That's a little bit bright that way. Let me show you that way. And it's robins on bobbins. Robins are really popular. Um, so you've got the robin sitting on the bobbins and scissors and things like that. That one is an outline. This one is in the stripe. And then you've got the robins on the bobbins again, but with the shadows in the background. And these are all my sketches. Um, so, but again, it's a really big piece. It's 150 wide by a metre. So it's a, it's a really big piece of fabric. And robins aren't just for Christmas, are they? They're for all year round. What time was it? Oh, it was 20 past. I thought it was later. That didn't take too long, did it? Um, right. So I was going to do a little bit of tripunto. But I put all my fabrics right on top. Come on, Stuart. Of my sample pieces. Again, there are different ways of doing this, so I'm just going to choose, I'm just going to show you a very easy way. So, Trapunto, if you weren't aware, is um, padding from the back. And there's lots of different styles, lots of different ways of doing it. And you can get like a Trapunto. Um, like a woolly thread that you can use and pull it through. There, there's loads of different ways of doing it. But basically it's, it's creating a 3D effect by using wadding um, or batting behind the image that you're going to use. So this is the owl from the Winter Woodland panel. And I want to pad this bit. Now this is where I said I would have used my uh, free motion. I was going to do a little bit of free motion embroidery. Can't find my foot. Can't find my foot so I can't do it. But not everyone's got a free motion embroidery foot so we'll do it without. This is the backing fabric. So that's basically a bit of scrap. And then I've got a piece of wadding to the same size as this. And I'm going to trim it down a bit as well, I think. Then I've got three pieces of wadding and it's just 80-20 wadding, which is just a little bit bigger than the owl that I'm going to pad. So the idea is that goes on top of there. I'm going to sew around the edge, trim that wadding back, put more wadding on the back, then put the backing on and then quilt it. That's the plan. So if you have some um, 505 spray, you can hold all the layers together. I have lots of 505 spray, just not here. Um, but it's, it's quite good with the wadding, it kind of sticks to itself anyway, doesn't it? So let's do this. So I can see the outline behind me here. If you can't see the outline through your project, then just put a few pins around the edge, just so that you know that your wadding is going to cover that area. Glad Robin isn't sat on your bobbin. <laughs> so now when I turn it over, I can see the area. Even if I couldn't see the owl through there, I could see the area that I need to put my padding so let's just make sure that area is covered and then I think I'll go back and just pin through the corners to hold that in place Laura wants uh, Sarah wants some help finding Kim's blog she can't find the bag on Kim's blog if you've got it would you mind putting a link on thank you Go, and that is there. That was thick as bent the pin. All right, now I'm going to sew right around the edge. This is where I would have found it easy with free motion embroidery. Um, what I would have liked to have done, I'm not sure if I can do it, but we'll have a go, uh, is to sew around the edge here. And then if you quilt if you stipple in very small stippling motions right up to the edge of your stitching, then take these stitches out, then you've just got a really nice outline without it being outlined with a row of stitches, if that makes sense. Um, well, even if it doesn't make sense, that's, that's what happens. You could use a water dissolvable thread to go around the edge, then stitch right up to it, and then wash it and the thread will disappear. It's funny, when I 
I bought some uh, water soluble thread, oh it's a few years ago now, and I was looking on the instructions on the back and it said um, <laughs> not, to, not to use with swimwear. And I said, oh, could you imagine? Could you imagine if you made the mistake of using water soluble thread with swimwear? How embarrassing would that be? How embarrassing. Right, let's see what we can. I wonder if I can free motion without the foot on and just use that foot. Not ideal. Let me find a piece of scrap fabric and have a go. Let's see what happens. Where's my feed dogs down? I've not done this on this machine before. Let's see what happens. If this goes wrong, then just ignore. Go and put the kettle on a minute while I have a play. No, nope, ain't gonna work. What's the try? You never, you never know till you try these things, do you? So I'm just gonna have to sew it. All right. So I'm going to use. Whoa. Quite a small stitch, so I'm going down to a 2.2, and we'll go over here, and I'm going to sew around the edge, not around every single feather, but just around the basic shape, just the bit that I want to be padded, so I'm not padding his feet, so I'm not going to go there, I'm just going to make a little bit of a a wavy edge and a small stitch because if I am going around curves like this it, it makes the line a little bit straighter than using a long stitch. So again we'll just make it a little bit wiggly around the feathers. I'm not worried about going around every single shape because I don't think it'll stand out that much anyway. around the side of his face and back to the beginning. Hello Anita! Heidi Ho from the USA she says. Heidi Ho to you too. Um, just wind down YouTube because my comments just seem to have frozen at Mary. Oh hello Anne. Oh and Sue and Sharon. Oh here we go. Uh, hello, Fee. No, I, that was the first place I looked, Fee. Um, I've got it over here, look. It wasn't in the accessory. I'm sure it came with one. I've not used it on this machine. The first thing I looked in was a little seat box. Still got it there. I've got a walking foot and I've got a bag full of other accessories, but I just don't have a free motion. Maybe I don't have one. Um, I've got one on the other machine because there will be... Um, free motion. I'll have a go and move the machine. Anyway, so I've got that. And that's it from the back. So now I'm going to trim the wadding as close to the stitches as I can. If you've got a duck build or an applique uh, pair of scissors, then that, that would be good to use. Because then you can get right up to the stitches. So just take your time. Make sure you don't snip through the fabric so I'm just moving that out of the way and just cut really really close. Ham and eggs for breakfast says Linda. Nice. All right. We're getting an egg a day from our chickens now. A whole egg. It's very nice. But considering there's five of them I think it's a poor job. Okay, so I'm just being careful cutting around here. Never thought to use any foot to free motion. Brilliant idea. Not to use my free foot to motion. Well, it's worth a go. So on some machines, you can take the foot off and use it, but it's a bit dangerous because you've just got your needle with no protection from a foot around it. So wasn't going to have a go at that. If it was on my own, I might do. But um, not, not, not a good idea to show other people how to injure yourself. So, good sharp pair of scissors to do this. And again, nice and close to the edge. Um, not a walking foot, Sharon. I was looking for the free motion foot. Did you get a free motion foot with your DX7? Oh, I'll tell you what we have got coming in. Um, the compensating feet 
for the DX7. If you've got a DX7, then we're going to get those feet in. Um, in fact, I'll show you that on Wednesday because I've got a sample here. Just need to have a play. Don't like to sell you things that I don't know how they work properly, so I'll have a play with that. Um, so yeah, that should be should be here on Wednesday. Okay, that's that. So you can see already that is starting to look a little bit raised. Can you see that already? Right. Could have got a bit closer there. Not the end of the world. And then this one goes on the back. I always get the egg, Andrew. I take it out the nest, so I get it. And again, a bit of spray, if you like, to hold that in place. And then the backing fabric goes on the back like so. Before I go any further, I'm going to iron that because I can't bear to work with crystal fabric. Linda got one with her DX5. Well, I should have it here somewhere then, shouldn't I? Just not in the bag. So I'm just, I've got my, I've got my chair on top of my plug. Coming out. I tried the no foot thing, bad idea, went through my fingertip. Ooh, ooh. Had to let it heal and then cut it open, it was too painful. <gasps> oh, I bet you swore a bit, Fee. Plug in a compensating foot is um, it's a metal foot. There's only it's for the Duke. There's two machines that you can use it with. I need to to sort that out. Um, but where you've got like the foot with a with the hole in the middle like that, these two bits move independently. So if you've got a thick fabric on one side, your foot will sit on it and on the other fabric, like on the seams of jeans, and it gives you a neat a neat edge. So it it's a, it does that. It's a foot that does that. Um, and I've got two widths as well. I can't remember the width of them. One's a quarter of an inch and one's a bit narrower. But yeah, I'll have a, I'll have a play with that. Um, no, Leslie, I did ask about that because initially I was told that compensation feet would work with any um, low, low shank sewing machine. And I did double check with George from Dukey last week when we were on Creating Craft and he said, no, it will only work with Dukey's and there's only a, a couple of machines it'll work with. I know the dx 7 is one of them, because that's why I got it. Um, but I'll need to double check what the other machines are. So, But they make them specifically for these machines, so I can't even say, you know, I can't even go anywhere else and get them. Um, no, I don't, Mary, I don't think mine are smart enough to hide their eggs. You see them bolting for the chicken pen and then coming out really excited and squawking, and there it is, but there's only one. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're still buying eggs. Five chickens and we're still buying eggs, Claire. That'll do. I'll iron that while we're here as well, because that was a bit creased up too. Alright. Uh, Always better when it's ironed. I do like do like a flat fabric. Thing is if your if your fabric's not pressed properly, unplugging Laura. Um there's a chance you can sew over the creases and it um, doesn't look so good when you've got little pinches in it. Okay. I've done the DX5. See, I'm not, I'm not too hot on my machine names. Um, put the washing pan a little hot on the foot that goes with the other. Thank you, Laura. Right, so, wadding over the back. Backing fabric over the back of that. And then I'm going to quilt up to it. I don't know what I'm going to do because I haven't got my... Let's just echo quilt it. So that's literally sewing around the edge. We'll do that a few times, shall we? That'll probably be the best thing to do soon as I can't find my free motion foot. Um, unless, I, unless I... No, we'll echo quilt it. So I'm going to use the edge of my foot, which is a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, and literally sew around the edge. I'm going up to a 2.4 on my stitches now. Now this time, I'm not going to take these stitches out. If I was stippling, then I'd maybe take these stitches out afterwards. Don't have to. 
So let's just follow the line around. I'm not doing all the little wobbly bits. Concentrating now, you say don't talk when I'm concentrating. A little bit wobbly around there. Now if you want it to be really padded, then you could um, use a different method. And let me just go around this once. So in which case, you can see it's got a fat tummy now. You could instead, you'd have your top fabric, your wadding, not the extra wadding, backing fabric, stitch around the edge, flip it over, cut a hole in the back and then put toy filler inside. So then you get a, a really fat plump area. So tummies on teddies and things like that I thought would look really good. Um, so we'll go around again. I like to start from a different place the second time we go around. But when I find that foot, we'll do the other method with, um, with some stippling as well. How's that? around again and again I'm not doing all the the wibbly wobbly wavy bits this time and I'm going to do one more I'm going to do one more so you could keep going for the whole of the area um, if you wanted to it's quite quite easy as well an easy way of quilting because you're just following the previous line. So there's nothing particularly complicated or, you know, you don't need to be a, an expert quilter to do this. It's just a really, really simple, simple way of doing it. And if you can see there how raised that is. So he's got a nice padded little fat belly for an owl there. And then from the top there, that's how it's looking. I think that's enough with that one. He looks like he's got a glow, doesn't he? On a glow. Um, oh, Rita's sharing it. I said, um, the pressure, is the press the foot pressure down? Oh, okay. Down's new to sewing. Did you try the box on the front there? Yes, I did. I did sew. It's not in there. I've got my, um, all my other feet and my uh, buttonhole foot in the bottom. So I think that's where it should be, but definitely no free motion foot in there. Uh, I've always done the traps. <laughs> Stuffing from the back. Um, could you pad its face a bit more and sew around that section so it's a bit more raised in the body? Would that work? It's the quilt presser foot. Q. Quilt presser foot. What's the quilt presser foot Q? What's the quilt presser foot Q, Martine? You could, I think, pad his face a bit more. Let's have a go. Have I got any? Don't think I've got any toy filler. Let me have a look in a minute. Might use some wadding. So if I sew just around the head, I mean this way. To be honest, um, I would have done that separately and just put some more layers of wadding behind that already see if that's that's made his head stand out a little bit more um let me see if i can just find some toy filler somewhere and pad it out a little bit excuse my back there we go this is always something laying around apart from the things that you need uh, let's go in here and see what we can do obviously if you're doing this you might need to put another piece of backing fabric on the back of it. Let's take this through the wadding as well. So I don't want to cut through the owl's face, but I am going into the wadding as well because I want the, the toy filler to be right next to the fabric. So let's open this up and see what happens. Oh, the letter on the foot. Is, oh, thank you, Martine. Oh, no, she hasn't got my foot 
Because she's got her own on, on her machine, Andrea. I can't blame her for that one. Let's see how this looks. <laughs> Might distort going around here a little bit, but you're just going to have to stretch that out. But yes, he's got a fat little face now. And then I'd, I'd hand sew that close just roughly. Let's push that up to the edge. Yeah, just going to have to be careful whatever you sew to that, because as you can see, it has ruffled it up a bit. But now he has got a padded little face. It's good, isn't it? Coffee. Coffee, Coffee Pilates. Time. Pilates? <laughs> Whatever they are. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot. Um, Thank you. This is for Rita. Rita was saying that um, she was uh, looking for Great Bishop Bake Off. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see it? read that one? No, I didn't see that. Uh, I just Googled it, and uh, if she goes to I Offers Movies, um, Google. I offer movies. I offer movies, yes. Oh, she wanted the Great Bishop's Own DVD. I think she did, yeah. Is that right, Rita? Sorry, I missed that one. Gary says go to I offer movies and they, they've got them on there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Coffee, anyone? No, no, don't, don't, don't. You know they're on the gin already this morning. The gin's on the go, it's on I. <laughs> Sylvia says morning. Morning. Uh, put this on a cushion or a bag. That, it'd be really nice, wouldn't it? Be quite, be quite cuddly. Should we stuff his body as well? Let's see what happens there. Why not? Decaf coffee. I have. I like a decaf diet. I can't tell the difference, to be honest, between decaf and and the normal stuff. So I thought may as well have decaf. Um, hi, Gary. No, back off. It's the great, the great British sewing bee. It's found your DVD, Rita, but I'm sure it'll be available on catch-up or one of those kind of things. All right, let's see what happens here. A fat body and a, a fat head. <laughs> <laughs> Just a fat owl, really, isn't it? Got a fat owl. A latte for cats. Honestly, you lot. Right. Again, it goes, just go wobbly, so I think if you're making a cushion out of it, then I know he's a good and reach. I think I'll keep him. See, it'd work, wouldn't it? It would work. And he's got a fat tummy as well as a fat head. I'm going to show you that. There he is, look. All plump. <laughs> Oh, Andrea, I don't, I don't think I'd try that. And then a cushion. A cushion would be nice, actually, wouldn't it? But I just wanted to show you that and, um, and see what you make with it. And it works really well with the owl as well. I just think it really, really suits him. We'll have a go at the free motion. When I get a free motion foot, I might have to... Um, um, I'd have to buy another one if I can't find it. Oh, I do jewels. Because uh, a lot of the time when you just experiment like that, then something happens. I didn't know I could do that. Sometimes it doesn't work. A lot of the times it doesn't work, but when it does, isn't it sweet? Um, we just stuff the owl first, then quilt to get the best effect. I don't think it, if, if you're stuffing with toy filler, then I don't think it really matters. I'd, I'd sew around the edge and then stuff and then quilt, personally. But I don't think it really matters which way you do it. Uh, Jane's got a purple parcel, lovely. Got the advent calendar from Rector right Grandson, fabulous. Um, easily make that into a bag, Sharon. Um, should we easily make it into a bag? We've got time, haven't we? Let's make it into a bag. So, let's put this down to make it square. Haven't got my bits ready to make a bag, but I don't see why we couldn't. A bit difficult to make it square when it's a bit lumpy, but know that was square so we'll just go along there Ooh, that sounds like it needs a new blade let's cut the side off here I 
we'll just do a simple tote bag then because I haven't got a fat lot of fabric to be honest with me down here because it wasn't a plan but you know may as well rather than waste it um, and I've had decaf for years Carl. can't remember the, if I see the way around if I have a cup of coffee it sends me buzzing like calf coffee um, right, I do have some spare blue, I think. Is that big enough? I'll be, oh no, that's a cushion cover back, look. See, I could make a cushion cover, I've already got the back. Um, what else do we need? We'll need some H640 and we'll need, Oh, could have done with another panel to go on the back, but I haven't got one, so I'll have to do it plain. Let's see what I've got I've got around. Did I see some more blue in there? No, I didn't. I've got that. Okay, it'll have a plain back. So, here we go. Um, this measures in at uh, 12 inches square, so I'll need two 12 inches squares as lining and one for the back. I'm not going to sew those together, but you'd, you'd sew those by hand normally. And let's just open this up. I'm just going to cut that in half. So it seems a bit of a waste, because it's a huge piece of fabric. Uh, did you get the bag to work out the one you were working on a couple of weeks ago? No, Mary, I didn't. I, I haven't revisited it, to be honest, because uh, been been a bit busy. And I forgot about it. But, um, yeah, I've got it down here somewhere. So, yes, I must, must revisit that one and have a look, because things don't always work. Um, could I add two of the panels to my recent order? Of, the, of these ones, Rita, let me write that down. Two panels for Rita. I can do that. Um, two Winter Wonderland panels for Rita. I've got your order ready to go, so I'll open it up and stick them in so you're not paying extra postage. Um, I'm having a problem with FedEx at the moment, Rita. They're not getting back to me. I was supposed to have a call to go through um, international um, postage on Thursday and he never phoned me. So I've emailed him this morning just saying we need to talk about this. I'm free on Monday, um, on Monday or Wednesday, so I'm hoping he's going to get back to me. Because when I just go into their uh, portal and put in an international, which I tried to do with yours this morning, it comes up as like £103. And that's not what they quoted me. So we will get there with international, but meanwhile, it's still going to be quicker. I might see how much Royal Mail tract is, actually, because I'm not happy, happy with every at the moment at all. Not my favourite people. Somebody came round and picked up one package and I'd got an extra four internationals. And he took the lot of them and hasn't done anything with them. And just disappeared and took me parcels. So I've got four internationals that I've got to replace which is a bit annoying, a bit annoying. so when I phoned every up they said no we've got no never pick them up he did pick them up he picked them up anyway I could vent a lot more about that but but we're, we're on public tablets here um, and I could say rude words um, Oh, morning, Katrina. Up to, yes, Kayla. Wouldn't be surprised at all. Why do they do it? What you know, if they think... It's the same, we've had it from other companies. We did have somebody take some parcels as well. Um, it's fabric. What do they think is in there that's valuable enough to risk losing your job over? Anyway, um, not moaning. So I'm just couldn't say I need three squares each to 12 inches square. Oh, hello, Karen Griffiths. Hello. I'm just going to make a bag. I wasn't going to make a bag, Elsie, but somebody says, can you make a bag? So I'm just going to make a bag because I've got time to make a bag. I'm going to make a bag. Just a really simple tote bag is what I'm making. Um, let me open that up. That's a lot bigger with a bigger mat. 
a lot easier with a bigger mat, I should say. Yes, Mary, oh no. Oh no, not happy. Well, it's not just hundreds of pounds that we've lost. It's the inconvenience of people that have ordered and they're just wondering where the parcels are. It's not very fair, is it? Dosh, Dosh is every very good. Good, I'm glad they are somewhere. They're just not here. <laughs> anyway, I'm not worrying about that. Um, these things happen, I suppose. Right, I've got all my squares done. I'm not putting pockets or anything in because we'll be here all day. And I've got my next project for the Half Yard Club to do, which I'm really enjoying. I'm experimenting with it at the moment, so I'm not going to tell you what we're doing. Um, but it's um, stained glass effect quilting. Really excited. That, I, I thought that, Denise, after he'd gone, because Gary says, what did he look like? I, said, I can't even remember what he looked like. I know it was a he, and he was a large chap. But I wouldn't be able to identify him in a lineup. But I did think then should have took a picture. I'll do that in future. I shall do that. Helen says, love it when you come up with making your bags. It's it's called winging it, Helen. Winging it. If I'd if I would have prepared some a, a bit of winging it, I would have brought some webbing down to make a handle out of, but but I didn't. Um Avery delivered a big order of gems worth five hundred pounds to my daughter and left in <gasps> left on her step, ripped open package. Oh, Jane. Karen loves the DPD drivers. Do you know we have a very good DPD driver now we're not using DPD anymore? <laughs> Mind you, the FedEx are more affordable. So we have adjusted all of the postage, so you're making a bit of a saving there now. Right. Um I'm not going to wad that bit because it's wadded. I'm just going to use, so that's going to be the back. I'm not wadding, that's a big piece, blimey. Now we've got a smaller piece. I'm asking you and you have no idea whether I've got a smaller piece or not. I'm just going down here, just bear with me. Over we go, oh, right down on the floor. Oh, hang on a minute, so I can go down into the cellar. Oh, because I saw a little piece down there. That's better. Oh, the perfect, perfect size. So I'm just going to put some fusible fleece on the wrong side of what will be the back of my bag. Chris said we had a lovely Hermes delivery guy, then someone tried to steal his car and run him over. <gasps> oh, my word. Steal his car and run him over. I don't know. I'm not surprised he had to leave. I think I'd have left with him. Um, best feasible fleece to make a bag sander. I'd say, um, Diane, this one, it's an H640. Uh, we don't have stock at the moment because we just can't get it. I don't know what's going on with H640, but all of our suppliers are out of stock. Go for an H630, which is slightly thinner than this one. So it looks the same, it feels the same, it's just very slightly thinner. And it won't give you a solid bag, but it's very easy to sew with. So it's about a quarter of an inch thick and, you know, it's, it's kind of standalone, but it gives you a nice finish to the bag without being too difficult to work with. I'll just cut around that. Uh, a doorbell camera. That would be a good idea. Mm. What do you reckon, Gary? A doorbell camera, that would be a very good idea. Ooh. See, with DPD, they won't deliver late. If they're late, they don't deliver at all. Anyway, anyway, enough of delivery drivers. Uh, right, so. I haven't got any webbing handy, I'll have to, have to make a handle. Webbing would have been nice with that, I think, but let's, let's make a handle. So, what length have we got? 
We'll do that one. So I'm cutting a piece of fabric four inches wide. You've seen this a hundred times before because this is really the only way I make handles. Um, and I'll cut two of those. And these are just the amount of fabric I've got left, really. So they're 16 inches long. Webbing. Mm, mm, oh, actually. Oh, no, oh, no. I had to ask Tyler what webbing was. <laughs> That's binding. That's yeah, webbing. That's webbing. Does that go with that? No. No, it doesn't go. So where do I find this? Oh, hang on, I'm hang on a minute. Have that. But I want that. Where do I find that? I don't think it's here, it's down in the office. It could take you three hours to get there and back and I'm not hanging around that but long. Can you fill in? <laughs> I'll sit here for three hours while you go there and back just for a piece of webbing. You normally would. I shall make the handles, thank you. Um, what do you reckon about getting a, a camera doorbell? Camera doorbell? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah we talked about that before, didn't we? Yeah, we should get one. Take pictures of delivery drivers when they take parcels and then don't do anything with them. Okay. What, do they have to strike a pose? They, they can, they can strike a pose, if they like. You have to show them what to do. Four inch strips. He tries. <laughs> um. Hi, Hannah. Oh, I can never pronounce your name, so thank you. Yes, I should, I should call you Hannah from now on. <laughs> Um, right, fold them in half and half again and sew down each side. Ooh. So I no normally cut all of this if I'm, um, if I'm doing a demo that I've planned. Right, let's put that over there. At the moment, I'm just getting, no, they just haven't been picked up. I don't know how many every driver's fee they'd have to go through their cameras to see if it was them. Well, at, at the moment, they said that they'd open a case for me and email me, email me and they haven't done that either. So I think I'm just going to uh, have to accept I've lost it. I think that's too long. I think I'll just do a handle, not a strap. So I'm cutting that down a bit. So that will probably now be about... 14 inches long, I should say. Yep, we'll get one of those then, Kaz. We'll get that sorted. Tend to trust people too much, I think. Right, and that goes over there. Morning, Helen. Just back from walking the dog. It stopped raining. I might get to go take her for a walk, actually, in a minute. We've had torrential rain here this morning, Helen, so I haven't been able to take mm -hmm. her out. Um, right, so long edges to the centre. And that one. Andrew's got CCTV. I have to have one of our cars scratch all the way. Oh. Why do people do it? What is that? Yeah, I need to be a bit, a bit more forceful with them, I think. At the moment, Carol, yes, our office is an hour and a half away because it's also an hour and a half for Kim in the opposite direction, so we're slap bang in the middle of the both of us. But we are hoping to move a little bit closer. In the next few weeks, I should have picked the keys upon Saturday, but forms to fill in weren't filled in, so it takes a little bit longer. So, yeah, we should be about 20 minutes from home instead of an hour and a half. That's why we don't go down every day. Oh, Jack has been looking after his sister-in-law's duck and chickens this week. Two ducks are sitting on eggs, two hats. Oh, early than expected. Oh, how lovely, little ducklings. I'm in Lincolnshire, Diane. Uh, FedEx repair. FedEx have been brilliant with me, Katrina, actually. I mean, they, they actually approached me. Um, and apart from not returning a call on Thursday, 
Um, they've been really good. They've picked up on time. They haven't lost anything yet. And they're more affordable. Afford oh, <laughs> don't know what happened. They're more affordable than, um, than DPD too. All uh, right, then I'm just going to sew down each side. Got a little bit longer. We've got eggs in school that are used to hatch this week, says Sandra. Oh, how lovely! Um, oh, hello, Rosemary. Notification didn't come up. I don't really know much about how notifications work. I don't follow anybody. And the same down this side. And you go. Got to come and thread it. This is the emails. Let's hit the thumbs up. Thank you, Risa. How many thumbs up have we got today? Don't normally look till after. Oh, there we go. Karen, thank you. Brenda, thank you. <laughs> right. Uh, let us stick these on the top then. So these are the two outer pieces. Let's um, have this facing downwards. I'm going to go just to each side of the owl. So you can and I measure that to make sure it's central. So I'd say maybe one, two, three inches from each side will do the job. That's a bit knotty, isn't it? That looks about right. Have a couple of clips in there. And then the same on the opposite side. And a couple of clips in there. Hello, Carolyn in Illinois. Welcome along. What time is it over there? So again, that looks shorter, but it's because it's a little bit puckered because of the um, the quilting in the middle. That goes there, that goes there. And we'll just sew those in place. It's a cute owl, isn't it, Andrew? It's very cute owl. I wish I could wish I could claim I was the artist on this one. Seven in Florida. Well, good morning. If you've got up early, especially, thank you very much. Really appreciated it. Um, with the ironing pad, you use it with steam. If so, does it go mouldy inside? Have you had the idea to put drill holes in the board for ventilation? That's a good idea. Um, but no, I, it's only cardboard. I mean, when did I, when did I make that? I think it was 2000 and... Was it 2020? I can't remember. It's years old and it hasn't gone mouldy yet. Oh. Elsie's got a problem. Okay, Elsie. Elsie's got a problem. She wants to make everything. No time to make it. If I had to pick a project, what do you sort... <laughs> what do you do to sort yourselves out? <laughs> how do you choose... Elsie said, basically, how do you choose what, proje what project you're going to make? If you haven't got much time, how do you choose? How do you decide? Right, back in fabric, right sides together. And just sew across the top. So that to that, that to that, sew across the top of there. Uh, yes, we do sew. We do sell the folding cutting board. It's, um, it's on the website. Uh, it's centimetres. We've only got centimetres at the moment and it's A3 that folds out to A2 and it's single-sided but on the back of it it's got grippy bits so it doesn't slide around all over the place and it's a prim one and it's very handy because I, I do like a huge cutting board but if you don't have the space at least that can fold down to half the size right let's just set these together across the top
Daryl says that with her it's the last, the last thing she bought is the one that gets done first. How much time have I got? All day? No, I'm normally here for an hour, uh, Helen. Because um, I, I don't stop working because it's the weekend, so I do. So I've got quite a lot of work to do today because I want to get the next Half Yard Club project, the main project, finished. Or at least do the step-by-steps and photography for it. I won't get a chance to do the video today. Um, but I do need to get that done. So, why is that shorter? So, next one down here. Tin foil on the cardboard repels the moisture. That's what I've used inside that one, uh, Kate. And it, it makes the heat go back up, so you get um, heat from the top as well as the bottom then as well. Karen keeps a cutting board under a bed. Uh, right, now these two pieces are going to go right sides together. So we need to make sure that the handles are out of the way, line up the seams at the side and go all the way around but leave a turning gap somewhere in the lining so I can turn it the right side out. Pauline's got a long list of projects from when I retire from work. I don't think I'll ever retire. Oh, I've gone into a fancy stitch for some reason. And if I did retire, I'd probably just take up sewing, so there's no point really, is there? Oh, I didn't put the lining on that. Oh no, that's the, oh, Deborah. Ignore me. Um, I'll ask my daughter if we can get hold of inches. At, at the moment, we can't. But um, yeah, I'll see if we can get hold of some of those. I don't think I'm going to square the base on this one because the owl's actually sitting quite low. On the, um, on the fabric, the print is sitting quite low and if I put a square base then it's going to disappear a little bit so I'm just going to leave this two-dimensional. And again this is a little bit wobbly because of the, the quilting so I'm just trying to keep that nice and flat, match at the seams as best I can when I come to the the seams here, flat, and then down the side, that's where I'm leaving the turning gap. And carry on sewing. Make your seam allowance on the lining a little bit wider than the seam allowance on the outside and you'll find that the lining sits better inside the bag. Only by a little tiny bit. That's a little tip to help that to work. Diane's sewing things are stacked up at the moment. So she's picking a new table for the sewing, oh, sewing corner in the lounge. Oh, that's lovely. You don't have to shoot yourself away and sew then. Oh, January 2nd, Mary says, 2021 it was, whoops, for the, um, for the ironing board tutorial on Facebook. That thing was on Facebook and on YouTube. And I think I've run out of bobbing thread. That was good timing. Left a gap, Amy, already left a gap. Um, what's that? Yeah, just about run out. So let's snip off the corners just to the outside, not going to do the lining. And then turn it the right side out. Do you remember, did ever, anyone see on, um, when I used to be on Sewing Street and they'd have a challenge Debbie? Because at the time we'd, we had, we, I don't know what it's like now, I can't, I can't even get it, I never watched shopping telly. Um, just think the seam allowance is a bit bigger, only a little bit, Susan. Um, so anyway, yeah, when I was there, you'd do five hours live, I was, when I was presenting there, you'd present five hours live, but normally there was only two or maybe three hours if you were lucky, you'd have a guest, so you're on your own. So we used to do a challenge Debbie, this just reminded me of it, um, because I'd have, they were very good there actually, because they, they have everything that they sell kind of in the studio, I don't know what it's like now, I think, I think they've moved, but if I was making something, I'd say, oh I need an unpicker, oh I need some, H640 or I, I need 
something, th they'd have it there, everything was all around the studio. So they'd do this challenge Debbie thing. So we'd start the show with a pile of fabric and maybe some bits and bobs and then people would email in saying, can you make this, can you make this, can you make this? And we'd pick something out and I'd just make it ad hoc. And I loved doing that, that was so much fun. Didn't always work. I did a really ridiculous Japanese knot bag one day thinking, oh, I can remember how to do that. I don't need to look at patterns and stuff. Sewing the opening closed. And yes, it turned out ridiculously, which is why I did a proper job and that's uh, downloadable on the website now. Um, <laughs> but I do like doing things like that. I don't know about you, but just experimenting. Just having an idea and thinking, I wonder if that's going to work. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Thread kit is not working on that at the moment. What's happening there? Got a bit of thread left. Torrential rain in North Yorkshire, I think it's heading out now way. Um, Who's a temptation? Sorry, talking to Andrew. Sorry, I thought I'd missed something, but you're talking to each other. Do you know, I think if I was busy, like next week, if I just go live at eleven o'clock and leave you to it, I think that'd be great. <laughs> Let's push this inside there. Oh, Julie, I'm, uh, my thread. Oh, oh, mm. oh, maybe the, um, maybe Orofil. Maybe, maybe Orofil. My mother used to call me that, Andrea. Ah, Deborah. Ah, Deborah, you are a temptress. <laughs> if I'd have said to my careers teacher, when I grow up, I want to be a temptress. I, I think she would have had something to say about that, could you imagine? I want to be a temptress when I'm older. Hmm. Who else has FOMO? What's FOMO? What's FOMO? F-O-M-O, -O, what does that mean? It must stand for something because it's capitals, Elsie. Um, lovely and sunny in Dublin with a lovely breeze. Oh, we'll see you Wednesday, Karen. Uh, I'm not going to sew around the top of this because I've just run out of thread. I don't think I've got, got enough to go all the way around, but I'll press it so you'll get the idea of what it's, what it's going to look like anyway. Let's press that. So it's not too rumpled and crumpled. But you see what I mean about the print being on the bottom? If I'd have made the base square, then he would have disappeared around the bottom a little bit. So I think better left two-dimensional. If you wanted to make a square base, you could always put a border across the bottom. Let's just go around here. Easier to iron from the inside, I find. Fear of missing out. Oh, didn't know that, didn't know that one. Oh. Thread, 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 thread. Thing is, you can't sew without it, so you're going to use thread for every single project you use. So, you may as well use the best, huh? Uh, I said I had it with your fabrics, fear of missing out on your fabric. Read what you do with all this fabric, I'd love to know. You must sew as much as me. Uh, right. You've got a YouTube channel. And look at that, just. Let's, let's get that in there, because I don't want to flatten the front. The back would have been nice quilted. Oh, I could have made an outline of an owl on the back and quilted that. If I'd have known I was making a bag, I might have thought about doing that. All right then, so what I would do is stitch around the top just to hold the lining in place and unplug me iron. And then you can see again, it's, it's just got a nice fat little tummy and a nice fat little head. What's behind my head with a bear on it? That is a, oh, the one up there. That's a bag that Janice made. It's actually got um, um, a PVC across the front of it. So that's the pocket. And the bear is at the back of the pocket. It's, it's part of the panel from this. And it's what Janice uses for her kids to send um, documents and paperwork and, and books and things like that to school with. So that's, yeah, Janice made that one. Shame about losing all that fabric, but joy of replacing perhaps. Marie says it's so cute. 
Lorraine's got loads of fabric. Oh, I'm like that, Lorraine. There's, I, I do have, um, I pick out the fabrics that I want to use from, from the office, obviously, and then I'll pick out the plain fabric to go with it, and then I'll get it back here and think it's not right. Should have brought some more back. Do that a lot. So that, that's finished anyway, apart from sewing around the top. Um, make a lovely gift bag for a child's birthday present. That would be a nice idea. So, oh, God, do you like it? That, that was that was a little unexpected making the bag. I was just going to do the quilting bit, but so uh, we've ended up with the bag at the end of it. So that's not bad at all, is it? Um, okay, I'm going to get off. Well, it's not raining, so I'm not going to get drenched while I go back down to the house. And um, I thought you've had a nice morning this morning. Um, let me just have a look if we're up to date over here. Mouse isn't working properly. Thank you, Kate. I'm glad you like it. Elsie says, I hit the thumbs up. We should have badges, shouldn't we? I'm um, going to my sister's next Sunday for it. All nice, Linda. PVC pouches on my makeup, on my makeup at the moment. I, 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 I don't know about you, but once I start doing something, everything's the same. Now I've done that, everything's going to have that technique on it till I get bored with it or find something else. Um, thank you, Elsie. Thanks, Dominica and Deirdre. And Daryl, have you back from shopping? So I'll go and I see you Wednesday. Yes, I'll be here on Wednesday at four o'clock um, from the Half Yard Club. Sorry, I missed that one. This is Half Yard Club, if that's what you meant. That's the, your, your next project on the 15th, the towel tote. Back off to the pool. <laughs> um, enjoy the rest of your holiday. Um, thanks, Sarah. Lovely. I'm glad you liked it. Loved every minute, says Diane. Oh, good. Right, so I'll see you again Wednesday. I shan't be here next Saturday, remember. I'm waving my finger at you. Um, because I shall hopefully be lying by the side of a pool myself for a whole weekend. I shall be very wrinkly by the time I get back. Um, iron's off, Laura. Thank you. Um, thank you, Rita. I'm glad you liked it. Have to rewatch. Uh, good morning from South Carolina. Hello, Rose. Hello to you too. We go now. So, hello, goodbye, Rose. I shall see you again on Wednesday. So, Wednesday afternoon at four o'clock. Um, if I can find me free motion foot or buy another one by then, we'll do a little bit of that, shall we? A little bit of free motion on Wednesday. Uh, thanks, Olive. I'll see you again then. You enjoy the rest of your weekend. Hopefully, your weather's going to be a bit better than we've got here now. And thanks for joining me. <laughs>